So I guess Judy decided she didn't want to sit with you anymore, Marty. <laughs> that was very short lived. <laughs> okay. Thought we were friends. <laughs> I thought I was a nuisance taking up space. Judy, you were not a nuisance. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome. It is Friday, January 27th, and um, uh, I am Marty Dickinson, the chair of the Board of Regents, and welcome to the Washington State University Board of Regents. I officially am calling the meeting to order. So as we were just uh, suggesting, the room got smaller. Apparently, everybody cleared out of here after spending the day with me yesterday. So, <laughs> and uh, Des just decided, yeah, move the coffee pot and the cookies. So, um, all right. Well, I would like to remind the audience that the regents, as well as presenters um, of this meeting, um, are um, we're doing this via Zoom. Members of the public are invited to view the meeting via the YouTube live stream. Uh, there is a link to the live stream and it's available on our WSU Board of Regents website. Um, I get to do a president's report here today and a couple of things. Um, just again, I would like to give a shout out to uh, Mariah Mackey, um, you know, our executive director of our alumni association. I've had the good fortune of getting to go to a couple of different out of town alumni events recently one at the WSU versus University of Arizona game in Tucson and just Mariah and her team do a really outstanding job. Um, just the energy and the acknowledgement of um, alumni in the various areas and presenting to them. I just, I felt like it was worthy of mentioning. So thank you, Mariah. Thank you to Mark, the president of the Alumni Association, um, as well as all the other people that participate in that. I also um, have had just a a great opportunity to watch and tour um, and see um, the evolution of the WSU Medicine Building up on our um, uh, Spokane campus. And for somebody that uh, watched the original building go up, that's how old I am, um, and been around the community, but and being perplexed on why we it would be designed that way and to watch WSU come in now and actually do something really, really great with it um, and see how it's going to be used for medicine is really awesome. So a shout out to Daryl DeWalt and um, Eric Smith and some others that are up there in Spokane and Olivia, of course, too. Uh, Lastly, I just get to do have the honor um, of getting to take a moment to recognize one of our fellow regents. Um, I mean, we knew we were lucky when um, Jeanette Ramos said yes to be a part of the WSU Board of Regents, and I think we all would agree that her thoughtful um, leadership and the way in which she listens is really something special. Uh, that we, I think, all learn from each time we're in a meeting with you, Jeanette, but um, she was recently selected to receive the most influential Filipina woman in the world award from the Filipina Women's Network at the 18th annual Filipina Leadership Global Summit in Libsyn, Portugal. So can we just take a moment, like give her a big clap. Thanks, Marty. A uh, bit of a surprise. Um, thank you. It's a good excuse to visit Europe for five weeks. <laughs> well, this is how gracious um, Jeanette is, right? Because she, we knew she was going to Europe for five weeks, but of course she didn't tell us why she was going. And so I just would like to say thank you to Regent Cerna for um, also bringing this to our attention. Um, this award honors Filipino women for outstanding work in their respective fields who are recognized for leadership, achievements in their global workplace, and who are changing the face of leadership in their local communities. So it describes you to a T, Jeanette. So thank you for being a part of our board. Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so that is my brief and quick report. I am going to actually turn it over now to President Schultz. Oh, excuse me, just one more public comment. Oh, sorry. We're, um, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I was just trying to get to you, Kirk. Sorry. Um, I do want to remind everybody that we have a public comment period during this meeting. The public comment period will be after the regular agenda, and it will be up to 10 minutes. Each speaker will be allowed two minutes. Okay, Kirk, it's your turn now. <laughs> Thank you, and good morning, everybody. Um, if I can go ahead and get my slides, please. 
if I look really awake this morning, uh, it's uh, simply because uh, this morning at about 4.30, our dog somehow got her collar stuck in her pen and started whining. So anyway, what was supposed to be a sleep in morning till six o'clock, uh, I was up and early and getting going. And then we took a lovely walk outside and 30 mile an hour gusts with sleet and rain. So it's been a fantastic day. It's only going to go up. From here, so, uh, well, it is Friday at least. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. So uh, anyway, uh, uh, thanks uh, everybody for doing this. I think uh, it feels a little different after doing a lot of our Regents meetings in person to sort of um, go back to a, a virtual one and I'm hopeful that you know we'll have some conversations about whether we want to continue this practice in January. Um, now that more and more stuff is in person, you know, when we go back to a Zoom, it just feels a little bit different. And uh, but I appreciate everybody being here in January and all our colleagues that have been doing reports. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, one of the key things that. Uh, uh, we do as leaders is we make sure that as we have leadership transitions, uh, work really hard to attract exceptional new leaders coming in. Uh, Stacy Pearson has done a magnificent job as our vice president for finance and administration. She's well trusted by faculty, staff, and students. She's been a transformational leader, and so uh, it was a uh, you know distressing when Stacy said, "Hey, I'm going to retire." Uh, but it also means there's an opportunity for us to go out and attract a real exceptional leader uh, to come in. So really pleased to welcome Leslie Brunelli uh, as our first ever executive vice president for finance and administration with a bit of expanded portfolio. Um, she'll join us a little bit later in the meeting to introduce herself. Uh, right now, <clears throat> she is at the University of Denver as uh, uh, also in a very similar role there. She has over 25 years of experience uh, and previously served prior to being at Denver uh, as the Vice President of Finance for the University of South Carolina, both the flagship campus in Columbia, as well as the University of South Carolina system. So comes to us with experience on both a major research one flagship, as well as uh, dealing with lots of different locations across the state of South Carolina. She's got a national reputation as a frequent presenter, panelist, and participant in multiple national organizations such as APLU, uh, NACUBO, which is the National Association of College and University Business Officers. Um, we're really looking forward to having her join us. Uh, her first official day will be May 1st, but like we do with a lot of other uh, team members as they join us, they spend some time getting to know us over the next several months. Um, I want to express some appreciation to uh, Regent Dickinson, who spent some time uh, meeting with Leslie during the recruitment process and was a real key uh, act, uh, a voice in uh, getting this successfully across the finish line. So look forward to introducing Leslie to you a little bit later this morning. Next slide, please. We also uh, pleased to announce that uh, Daryl has extended his contract through June of 2027. Uh, and uh, we also changed his position title to executive vice president. This is really to recognize the importance of the health sciences uh, at Washington State University. Uh, if we look at, we have lots of opportunities to grow as an institution, but certainly the health sciences represents a major uh, place of investment uh, for the state of Washington with the, with the founding of our medical school. And I think if I just recount a few kind of key things uh, over the last several years, uh, Daryl's onboarded new deans in nursing, pharmacy, and pharmaceutical sciences and medicine. Uh, we've added a residency program in Pullman to go with an existing internal residency program in Everett, and we're in the process of standing up a residency program in pediatrics, and that is in process right now, so it's not done, uh, but we are optimistic when we look at our fundraising, when we look at the accreditation visits and those things that will successfully launch this program very soon and we'll continue to move forward in that space. Uh, also, uh, Regent Dickinson also mentioned the renovation of, of the medicine building on the WSU Spokane campus. And right now the College of Medicine is spread across, I think seven buildings or seven different spaces. And it's gonna be great for our College of Medicine and other parts of our health sciences campus to be in a single location with really modern state-of-the-art space. Um, and then finally, in terms of fundraising and philanthropy and partnerships, 
Uh, Daryl's really led a lot of discussions with the healthcare, uh, major healthcare providers in the Eastern Washington about partnerships, not just with WC Medicine, but with nursing, pharmacy, medicine, and also really working with veterinary medicine uh, at uh, on the WSU Pullman campus. So we really appreciate Daryl's continued leadership and look forward to continuing to grow our health sciences over the next several years. Uh, next slide, please. Well, one of the other things that was recently announced is a uh, partnership uh, between WSU Everett and Everett Community College. And many of you know that uh, essentially, our, our campus building there, it's a single building, is really located contiguous to WSU, Ever I'm sorry, Everett Community College. And I appreciate the work that uh, Chancellor Paul Petrie does in making sure that we have a really robust partnership uh, with Everett Community College. So what this effort is, it's not just a typical MOU that we might sign uh, to help our students transfer, but what this is, is a, a degree partnership program, the first of its kind in the state of Washington. It allows students to take classes at both WSU Everett and Everett Community College, use facilities and services at both locations, seamlessly transfer credits and combine credits to receive financial aid. And what this does, bottom line, it enables students to focus more on academics and less on financial and logistical difficulties associated with navigating the transfer pathway. I think we're going to see more of these type of partnerships. This is actually modeled off a really successful partnership between Oregon State University and Lynn Benton Community College. Um, recent studies have shown these types of seamless partnerships. Uh, students take fewer credits. They save money, have higher GPAs, higher graduation rates, and avoid unnecessary student debt. So this is a real positive uh, step forward. And when enrollments are down, not just at WSU, but almost all of the community colleges, this is a great time for us to really cement these partnerships and truly grow together. So just a big hats off to Chancellor Paul Petrie uh, and uh, Daryl Kane, who's the president uh, at uh, Everett Community College for this partnership and continuing to work together. Next slide, please. Well, when WSU was, <clears throat> contemplating, working with the board and others about uh, the WSU system and kind of taking that step. There is a uh, organization called the National Association of System Heads or NASH that we became a member of. And there's something like 38 or 40 uh, public university systems in the country. And uh, about once or twice a year, this group gets together to share best practices and things like that. And uh, as we sort of build out one WSU, what we want to do is take practices that work well at other institutions and make sure that we're duplicating and using those best practices, but not to do the same things that sometimes people at other systems say, boy, if we were building this from the ground up, don't do this. Um, and I think that's been extremely helpful. It's not, though, just networking. One of the things that has come up that Nash is working with all the different partner university systems on is what are our ultimate goals as <clears throat> university systems to transform public higher education in the country? And we came up with three major goals uh, that all of us are going to be worked or contributing to. The first is increasing degree and credential completion. The hope is to award an additional million degrees and credentials by the year 2030 and reduce equity gaps at the same time. That's across all of the different systems really over the next uh, eight years. The second thing is increasing social mobility. And what Nash wants to do with all the systems is advance 85% of students from families in the bottom 40% income bracket to the top 60% income bracket. So a very quantitative measure and one that <clears throat> Chris Hoyt and our uh, strategy planning and analysis team will be providing data on as we contribute to this national effort. And then the third major uh, objective is reducing student debt. And we want to decrease uh, student, the, uh, let me get this right, decrease the median debt borrowed by Pell students by 25% again by the year 2030. So I think these are very quantitative, measurable types of things. I'm glad WSU is part of the national conversation on this. And we're all sharing ways that work, things that don't work. 
and uh, I'm I'm pleased that we're uh, participating in in these important efforts. Next slide, please. Well, recently the WSU system and all of our campuses uh, recognized uh, Martin Luther King Day uh, with several different initiatives. Uh, one was a system-wide book drive to give the gift of reading to commonly overlooked individuals and in, in settings. Uh, it's, it was a small way, but a great way for many of our students, faculty and staff to give back and get involved in the communities. The Center for Civic Engagement held a food drive uh, at a local Safeway in Pullman, and they were able to donate nearly 800 pounds of food to the Cougar Food Pantry and Community Action Center. We also hosted our first National Day of Racial Healing on January 17th, and it's really intended to inspire culturally and racially sensitive practices and conversations. There are multiple system-wide virtual and in-person opportunities for our campuses all to participate. What you see here in this picture is a mural that was painted throughout the day on the WSU Pullman campus. So I just want to uh, express my appreciation to our leaders in diversity, equity, and inclusion that helped coordinate those events, to our students, faculty, and staff that participated in these events. And I think it was a, a really uh, great day for uh, the WSU system uh, to recognize the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, as we continue to move forward, being an inclusive environment for all across all of our campuses. Next slide, please. Well, I had the opportunity, and you can see there, I look so intrigued in the slide. They caught the picture at really the wrong time. But uh, I'm standing next to Chancellor Sandra Haynes, along with Governor Jay Inslee, for an announcement uh, on the WSU Tri-Cities campus to express the governor's support, uh, which meant that it was going to be included in the governor's proposed budget for the Northwest, uh, the Institute for Northwest Energy Futures. The governor's included a $7.7 million a funding request to fund the Institute. This will support the acquisition of office and lab space, as well as eight uh, tenure track faculty uh, across WSU Tri-Cities and WSU Pullman uh, to really look at solving some of the really challenging energy issues facing the state of Washington and to really serve as a place where people can go and have studies done uh, hopefully from a fairly unbiased perspective, as we really work to make sure that we are helping shape the energy future for the state of Washington and the Pacific Northwest. Um, we also want to make sure that this is not completely technical, but that you also involve uh, our colleagues in the social science and humanities uh, around the implications of some of the technologies and some of the things that people would like to do um, also, we want to look at cradle to grave life cycles around things like uh, wind energy, solar cells, and other types of things uh, to make sure that we're providing a complete description of the impacts these things tend to have uh, on our state just now and into the future. I want to really applaud Chancellor Sandra Haynes for her leadership in this. Uh, Sandra did a great job over the last couple years of formulating a vision for the Tri Cities and a strong energy focus. This was a result not of sort of an overnight uh, session, but really multiple years of planning, philanthropic work and establishing an endowment to support this, and then having the governor buy into that vision. So hats off to Sandra, uh, her team, for all the work that they did on this. Uh, next slide, please. For my final slide, just a quick update on fundraising. I know uh, Mike Connell will talk a little bit more about some of this. We have several nice commitments. We received an additional uh, $1.5 million commitment to Schweitzer Engineering Hall to name an auditorium in the building. That occurred just in the last few weeks. Uh, to date, we've raised nearly $37 million out of a $40 million fundraising goal uh, for Schweitzer Hall, with many other proposals still pending. Uh, we also have <clears throat> several new commitments uh, to the Medicine Building Renovation Project in Spokane. We're using this renovation as an opportunity to go out and engage with lots of partners for the College of Medicine that helped us get uh, a College of Medicine in the first place. And now it's an opportunity for those communities uh, and companies, individuals, and so on uh, to provide a little bit of enhancement to that space so that when we recruit new faculty, staff, and students to WSU Medicine, they've got really modern 
uh, teaching, laboratory, and student space uh, as we make a difference for rural and underserved communities. I also want to just take this uh, time to express my appreciation to Mike Connell and his team. Uh, we are in uh, early stages of our next comprehensive campaign. Uh, then a lot of groundwork has been done, and we look forward to communicating and doing some small group uh, type of things with many of our prominent donors and investors uh, across the nation uh, over the next few months. So with that, uh, I appreciate the time to be here today. Uh, we have a lot of positive momentum moving forward. Uh, I know uh, we finished off the, the spring uh, up over with first year and transfer students that were where we'd expected. And some of our early projections for the fall semester uh, look extremely promising, not just the number of applications, but we think the number of students uh, that we're gonna see on our campuses. And so I know we've seen an enrollment dip. We talked about that yesterday. I'm very optimistic that we're gonna see a really fantastic recovery uh, this fall uh, with first year students and transfer students on all of our campuses. So um, Regent Dickinson, that concludes my report. Appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve as president of WSU and look forward to continuing to build together. Thank you. Thank you, President Schultz. A great report. Um, loved hearing about what's going on on each of our campuses. So thank you. Um, and I just, I think, would like to take a quick second to just um, acknowledge both Kirk and Noel um, and just their, your steady hand of leadership and presence in this community in Pullman, Kirk, during a really, really tragic, very dark time. And the way in which um, both you and Noel, but also um, Elizabeth Chilton and Chancellor Chilton, the work you've done to bridge um, Idaho and University of Idaho and Washington State University is significant. I've heard that from several different people that are leaders throughout these two communities. And um, just, we appreciate your steady leadership, Kirk, immensely. And you had some very, very difficult things to navigate over the last several years. And you do it with grace and with a glass half full all the time. So thank you very, very much. And please let know that we appreciate her presence as well. Okay, with that, um, I'd like to move to a report um, from our chancellor of our WSU Global Campus. And we just have some really cool stuff happening globally. And so I'm going to introduce Dave Soleil. Dave, welcome. Thank you, Bridget Dickinson. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, what, what I thought I would do since it is the 30th anniversary of the Global Campus is look back first, then take a look at where we're at today, and then look at what the future may hold. Um, so uh, next slide, please. So in 1992, I promise this won't be a history lesson, we launched the distance <laughs> degree program. Uh, it was a, a degree completion program. You had to come into Washington State uh, DDP with credits, and then you could complete your degree, primarily at the 300, 400 level. And, and the way the process worked at the time was very cutting edge, very innovative. but students were mailed a box that contained video cassette tapes, textbooks, a study pack designed by faculty, and a whole bunch of pre-stamped envelopes. And the student would watch the video, read the textbook, complete the assignment on paper, probably writing it out by hand. They would put their assignment in a pre-stamped envelope, mailed it to DDP. DDP would open that envelope, take out the assignment, put it in another envelope, mail it to the faculty. The faculty would open it, grade it, put it in an envelope, mail it back to DDP. DDP would open that, put it in another envelope and mail it to the student. The student would open it up. If there were no corrections, they'd move on to the next lesson. So again, at the time, very innovative in terms of access to WSU, but a very different experience than we have right now. Uh, in 1997, we offered our first online course. Uh, think. 14.4 baud modems, 28 baud modems, probably a, a slower experience, not a lot of video, very text-based, not the type of experience we have today. In 1998, um, we continued to lead the nation. We launched the very first student government designed to support students at a distance. Distance students were not incorporated into other student governments. This was their own student government recognizing their significance and their individuality. Next slide, please. Then in 2006, from that 1997, we went fully online. 
Everything that we offered students was in an online format, increasing the access and availability of Washington State University around the state and partially into the country. Then in 2010, we made a, we made a serious commitment. Um, we began to admit freshmen. And although that's significant in and of itself, what this means was we were offering the entire Washington State University de degree online. We now had, in addition to the 300 and 400 level courses, we were offering the courses at 100, 200 level. So you could start as a freshman and finish as a senior completely online through the global campus. Then in 2012, the global campus became the fifth campus in the WSU system. And what this really meant was that Washington State University made a statement. We are committed to the success uh, of our students, no matter if they're on campus or online. Next slide, please. And then again, we made a, a bit of a transformation. Although we were doing student engagement activities, we really put a focus on connecting students to faculty themselves and to Washington State University, just like you would find on a physical campus. So we really focused on developing activities that existed outside of the classroom, just like a student would go to an event, a guest lecture, a sporting uh, competition. We were trying to build those type of experiences for our global students as well. And in the beginning, they were pretty simple. It was a, a, a faculty member that had expertise in a particular area. They provide 10 to 15 minutes of, of uh, presentation, and then it was di designed for conversation. So things like home brewing, nanotechnology, dream analysis, and the idea was to was affinity, pulling students together who were interested in a similar topic topic um, to make a connection, to be engaged, to um, find relationships. And these had two students, these had forty students. It, it didn't matter the size. Then in two thousand nineteen leading the nation again by appointing a chancellor for its virtual campus, um, again, uh, leading the nation in terms of being one of the first to do that. And then in 2021, we had our very first global campus commencement. Next slide, please. So where are we today? So this is three days old. We just received word from US News that Washington State University Global Campus actually moved up in their rankings. The Global Campus Undergraduate Baccalaureate Program was ranked 18th in the country, um, uh, moving up from where we were ranked uh, uh, last year. Uh, next slide, please. And with those US News rankings, um, according to Kirk, they are extremely important when we win. So I'll leave it there. Um, so global campus, fall 22 enrollments, uh, our undergraduate enrollments were up, uh, our grad and MBA enrollments were down a bit. We, we came in uh, just above 3,800 students uh, taking global campus courses. But I think significantly, um, it's the non-global enrollments that, that are interesting to me. We had 30, over 3,700 non-global students taking an online course. Uh, in fall of 22. And the interesting thing um, is when we first started talking about, hey, let's open up global, let's get, let's let, let's let uh, non-global students take online courses. There was a lot of concern about, well, you'll decimate the face-to-face -face courses. They're, what happens if they all run to the online courses? And, they, and that was a conversation. We thought, well, let's try it in a small pilot way and see what happens. And if we look at these 3,700 students, you're going to find that the vast majority of them are only taking one course. They're supplementing their, their, their course schedule with an online course. And it, the, the, the reasons vary. Um, one that we heard was I could only get into English 101 at 8, 8 a.m. on campus, so I decided to take it through Global Campus instead. So I think that's a growing population that Global Campus is in a, is in a position to support. Uh, next slide, please. So we also have other enrollment uh, channels other than fall and spring. We had over 6,000 students taking a summer session course uh, this last summer, uh, and we had over uh, I, the, in, in winter 2021, we had 780 students. 
in winter session 2022, we had 876 students. So that session continues to grow and really serves as a pipeline for students who may have gotten off track in terms of their time to degree, juniors and seniors who may have had a stumble in the in the fall, decided, hey, I got to get back on track. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm really going to uh, put my nose to the grindstone for these three weeks between the end of fall and the start of spring and get this course, uh, get my schedule back on track. Average age of our students is 31. We represent, or we have students from 33 countries uh, this last fall taking uh, global courses. We've got 48 states uh, taking global courses. 31% of our students are first generation. 33% of our students are students of color. 63% are female. And 72% of our students are Washington residents. And this is this is a change from where we started uh, even the last few years. The, the majority of our students were Washington residents the number of non-resident students is beginning to, to really grow. And I think it's because people are recognizing Washington State and Washington State Global Campus as a, a quality online program. Next slide, please. So this is the Global Connections and where it's where it's evolved to. So you, you can look through here and you can see that it's beyond just the lectures. We've got games like Trivia, Jeopardy, uh, virtual game day, we've got career service information, data management, veterans benefits, uh, nutrition, music, culture. Uh, and we also have a number of asynchronous events like a virtual 5K, uh, a scavenger hunt. And again, all of these things are designed to build community, get students engaged, connected to Washington State University and, and one another. Next slide, please. Okay, so where might we go moving forward? So this is gonna be a bit more fluffy than uh, the stuff I just talked about. So I, I, think about, I think about where we were in 1992 with a box of envelopes and some cassette tapes and where we're at today, where we're communicating with students using uh, artificial intelligence and potentially delivering lab experiences using virtual reality. Two very different experiences. At the time in 1992, what we were doing was cutting edge and innovative. Looking back at that time, maybe not so much today. And so but looking forward five, 15, 30 years from now, I get excited about what's in front of us. Maybe looking back from tomorrow to today, we might see that same picture as today back to 1992. But I do think, I do think we've got some challenges in front of us. And, and for example, you know, I think about the, the world pre-pandemic. And there are many aspects of that world that were very personal and immediate. And what I mean by that is I think about myself growing up. Um, I had three television channels. If I wanted to watch Happy Days, I had to wait until eight o'clock on Thursday night for it to come on. If it passed, I missed it. There wasn't a place I could go to go find it. And I think about my life today, I can, I can stream an entire series of a show and watch it in an afternoon, although I don't do that, Kirk. Uh, I, 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 can, I, can, I can access anything I want at any time in terms of entertainment. I, I, when I was growing up, if I wanted something, I had to go down to my local store and hope they had it. Now I can go on to any online marketplace and I can buy anything and have it delivered directly to my door. So as we went through the pandemic and have come out of it, I see students who, um, some want their educational experience entirely face-to-face. -face. They don't want to see technology anymore. We got another set of students that want their, their higher ed online. We got another set that wants some face-to-face -face and some online, and another set that wants online with some face-to-face. -face. And then we got another subset that wants what they want when they wake up that day. So I do think we're going to be pushed. I think there's going to be an expectation that global campus becomes more personal and immediate. But I do think it opens up some really interesting opportunities to access communities that haven't had access to the global campus in the past. And I think if we continue to push and to innovate, we're going to be the difference between when we launched 
global in 1992 to where we're at today. So I know I'm running short on time. I'm going to stop there. I really want to show you uh, a video. Last fall, we, um, we, as part of our 30th anniversary, we created the Global Campus Society for Distinguished Alumni. We inducted five members at the Arizona State game at halftime. Here's a brief snippet of their journey and some of their experiences. You think, okay, I'm gonna go to college and I did some community college really quickly after high school. And then life of course takes over and I ended up working full time and really committing to that. In 2009 though, I was a program manager at eBay and I ended up getting laid off. And I'd been there for 10 years, almost 11 years. And I was really um, worried that I was gonna be back in the job market and competing with all of these younger people who have degrees and, and I didn't have one. And after some thoughtful contemplation with my husband decided, you know what, I'm gonna go back to school. I'm gonna finish my degree. I'm gonna take all those credits that I accumulated over the last 20 years. And I'm gonna see if I can go back and get a bachelor's degree. I had to leave WSU in the fall of 79 because I ran out of funding. Then I got married a year later and, and we moved to the Midwest and I tried to go to other universities and begin again, but it was a lot harder to, to be working full time and then have to physically go to class. So I just didn't find another home again until 25 years later when interestingly at the same time that my godfather was asking me if I was going to finish my last year of school or oh, and uh, Tim Pavish was the new executive director of the WSU Alumni Association and he said you know Lisa they have this online degree program why don't you give it a try I will never forget my first conference with my educational advisor when I expressed concerns about everything being online that I didn't think that maybe I had the skills that were necessary to, to get this job done. And, and he said, oh, don't worry, Lisa, we're going to drag you kicking and screaming into the 21st century. <laughs> so I did take three years to complete that last year of school because I was working full time. I had a family and I was also volunteering. So I wanted to be able to enjoy my educational experience. What brought me to WSU Global Campus was when I decided to go to school to get my, my undergrad bad degree. The reason I did that is because uh, I do a lot of philanthropy around scholarships. And so I was talking to a lot of the students that I help and they would always ask me, well, where's your degree from? And, and so forth. And I would have to say, well, I didn't get to go when I was younger because we didn't have the financial means. And that's why I do these scholarships now. I just decided over some years, people kept asking me that. I said, well, maybe I should get my undergrad degree. I'm not too old. It's never too late and I'm going to learn a ton. So I, I decided to look around. I was looking at different schools and then it struck me. Why don't I go back to the school that I was originally accepted at um, out of high school and get my degree there? And WSU, of course, has a really robust online program and I knew, knew I would have to do it online because um, I work and so forth. So that's how I decided to choose down your shoes. I went back to where I applied to years ago and I wanted to finish that loop. And so here I am. The reason I chose Global Campus or the, the reason I was motivated to do Global Campus is I, I, I originally wanted to do a brick and mortar um, you know, location locally and things just didn't work out that way. And when I decided that I wanted an online program, which would give me more flexibility and all that, I wanted a real education from a real university and a place I could call home. I think I was an early attendee in global campus and, and online learning, and I had a tremendous experience with global campus. They were very understanding of where I was um, age and stage in my life and in my career. 
and really helped me um, come up with the classes that I needed to matriculate um, to finish my degree, to make sure that they were additive to my life experience and education. And I had a tremendous experience and not only just through technology. I mean, the technology was relatively new. Um, the idea of building onto someone else's work in an online environment was was kind of new at the time. And it was a, so not only did I learn the actual curriculum and academics of the class I was taking, but it was also sort of a, a great jumpstart techno, uh, technologically for me as well. My experience was, uh, it was awesome. It was um, extremely interesting and challenging, demanding, but at the same time exciting. In my own personal um, life, it, it gave me more confidence. I always had a lot of confidence, but it gave me more and I felt really good about myself. And it helped me to seek new challenges and it also broadened my worldview. Well, I've always considered myself a lifelong uh, cougar and a big supporter and fan of WSU. And as I said, I spent four years on campus, but I could never say I was a graduate of WSU. And so having accomplished that and achieving that degree um, allowed me to not only have that as a personal accomplishment, but also really jettisoned me um, in that level of my career. So post that, I became a publicly traded CEO and had that degree, I think, to help me um, push that forward in my career as well. Just, just a FYI, Nancy was our very first graduate of uh, the DDP program in 1994. So anyway, Regent Dickinson, that concludes my presentation. If there are any uh, questions, I'm happy to field those. Great. Thank you, Dave. What a great report. Uh, questions or comments from anybody, any of our regents on the line here? So, uh, Chancellor Sole, I want to thank you for your presentation. I'm so glad that we are hosting our January meeting uh, virtually so that we have our global uh, chancellor with the opportunity to present. I also wanted to share that I had the opportunity to participate as a member of the WSU Vancouver Advisory uh, Committee. And uh, we had a joint advisory committee with the global advisory group and what an impressive advisory group you have formed of community members that um, really represent a tremendous amount of uh, supporters. And uh, I just really want to emphasize that our global campus is such a significant part of the WSU community and that those leaders that are engaged in global um, bring that same kind of commitment that those that show up to our physical campuses also bring uh, to the, the, the Coug community. So I just really appreciate uh, your leadership and and the work that you're doing with our, our global students and uh, and those that are supporting the global campus. So thank you for all you do. Thank you for those thank comments. You, Regent thank, you, thank you, Regent Shower. I see Regent McDonald um, has her hand up. Thanks, Dave. Um, I teach for the global campus. I love the support and the energy that the global campus brings to our students. And I'm always amazed at how well I get to know my students, even though we never meet face to face. The one comment I have is when I go into a face-to-face -face classroom, I now have students potentially on five campuses. I'd really like your students there too. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. Or our students there too. Thank you. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Okay, any other comments for um, Chancellor Soleil? Madam Chair. Yes, thank you, Brett. Um, I love the report, Dave, and I love, I love the energy, and I'm a big believer in the online mission. I, I wonder if as a board, we could consider um, encouraging broader marketing of that asset. And the only reason I, I mentioned that is I've been pro-WSU my whole life, um, culturally. And several years ago, Mrs. Blankenship was considering some online 
classes, but the institutions that got her attention because of marketing were like Arizona State and some of, some of our peer universities really marketing themselves well. And it wasn't until I joined the board and met you that I even knew we had an online campus. So I think we could up our game in that area. And if it needs the board's attention, I'd like to give it to you. And um, that's a broad space. It's a growing space. And I, I want to be at the, at the top of our game in that if, if um, I can encourage you in that direction. So no criticism at all. I just think <laughs> we could, we could um, as, a, as a group, um, look for opportunities there. Yeah, I, 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 I agree. Um, you know, uh, it's a it's a really noisy space, online education. I, as, as an example, um, I, I read the other day that Southern New Hampshire University spends $136 million on marketing every year. So, I, you know, talking with Kirk, I think one of the one of the opportunities that we have is to be creative in the way that we get the word out. You know, maybe television isn't the right thing for uh, WSU Global Campus, but maybe there's some other creative ways to, get, to inform folks. And we're, and we're working on those. But Regent Plankenship, I, I appreciate the, the, the support and the comments. Dave, before we leave this topic, describe a little bit. You, we probably do more marketing on Global Campus than almost anything else. So yeah. maybe talk a little bit about what we do with the EMBA marketing. We have an outside firm that helps us as well as some of the geographic uh, market work that you guys do uh, to target certain geographic areas. I think it'd be good for the board to hear a little bit about that. You, you bet. Yeah. So mo most of our, most of our work is uh, uh, through social media uh, and, and virtual clicks, if you will. So uh, as an example, uh, this last year, we partnered with uh, uh, Carnegie, uh, which is a, a marketing for a digital marketing firm. Um, and we uh, ran a pilot that did uh, geofencing. And so what we decided to do is we targeted every community college in the state. And anytime a student was on that campus uh, and they pulled up their phone, their tablet, their computer, they got information about Washington State Global Campus. And um, we, saw, we saw a pretty good spike and the number of applications and enrollments because of that pilot. This year we're going all in, and so we're really gonna we're really gonna push um, that 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 program. We've partnered with third parties, uh, education advisory board, where we um, did affinity campaigns, where we got we got folks that had already been connected to WSU in some way. Um, like many of the stories you heard in that video getting information back to them about, hey, it's not too late. You can come back to WSU. You can complete your degree. Uh, and we saw some we saw some good uh, work there. So again, I think it's being creative in how we attract students to WSU. Uh, and we're going to continue to push push that in. Thank so, you. That, okay. Thank you, Chancellor Slay. That's outstanding. Brett, thank you for your comments. And I um I'm glad you said something on that, um, President Schultz. The geofencing is really, that's a brilliant idea. And be interested to like do that geofencing with kids that did not return after COVID. Um, and are they out there? Where are they? And how could we go get them re-engaged globally versus having them come back to campus? So that could be another interesting target audience that you might think about if you haven't already. I also just the number um, at 65 and a half percent of your program is females. I think that that is really, really important because it's providing a vehicle probably for a lot of um, women who were not able to finish their education or perhaps are single parents or just needing something to be able to bridge um, from where they're at today to finish their education or um, get a four year degree. So it's a really special an important uh, piece to WSU, but also to the state of Washington. So um, outstanding work. And I'd like to learn more about how I get to uh, do spring cleaning through the global campus. <laughs> we all probably could stand to have that here in a few months. So, and the virtual, 5K, the virtual 5K, the virtual 5K is a good one as well. So a uh, way to be creative and, um, and just to 
innovate and stick with this, Dave. I know it's been a journey. So thank you for um, doing the journey with it. Thank you. Okay, we are moving into um, another piece of our um, program here where I am going to get the opportunity um, after I speak with Kurt for a second or turn it to Kurt for a second, but we're going to take a moment to recognize um, Dr. Sashi Pillay. And so Kirk, I'll kick it over to you and then you can give it back to me. Well, well great. Um, and thank you for this opportunity. Good to see Sashi on. And uh, this is his last board meeting before he's taking on a new opportunity uh, at the University of Nevada at Reno. And uh, <clears throat> so I think back um, my first couple of meetings with Sashi uh, talking about where WSU was in terms of our IT space. I think that first meeting, Sashi, you mentioned we had we supported seven different email clients. Um, it was just a complete free for all. And I appreciate the fact that uh, it doesn't work in universities when you tell people what they must do. You sort of have to create an environment where they want to move to a different space. And Sashi did a great job of just over a year or two, um, really putting forward a, a convincing plan and helping move our faculty there. Uh, Sashi was also a great partner with our deans. Um, we had a lot of distributed IT folks and Sashi's perspective was to be a problem solver, uh, ask people to you know, invest some resources in his area. And then we had a lot of colleges that decided it's better to work centrally uh, than it would be to you know, have their own uh, under-resourced shop. And I appreciate his perspectives on that. Um, I think if I look at the end of his time here, uh, I think we're best in class around computer security. Uh, Sashi's put a lot of time and effort into that. We do a lot of comp computer security work for the Eastern Washington, not just WSU, but we're really seen as a model there. And uh, that's something that was important three or four years ago. It's really important now. That included you know, adoption of multi-factor authentication, which was a change for our campus, uh, required training uh, around uh, computer security for all faculty and staff. Um, other things, uh, we used to do software purchases where every college would do their own. I think we had four different MATLAB licenses and Sashi was successful at uh, putting together centralized programs to say, if we're gonna buy something, let's do a university license, everybody can contribute. And then all of our students have access uh, to these different kinds of things. So finally, I just, uh, Sashi was seen and is still seen as a great colleague with the uh, co colleague vice presidents. Uh, if anybody was going to bring a new idea about how to do something, Sashi always brought that to the table. Um, uh, like a lot of folks who have lots of ideas, some are great, some aren't. But you know what? You got to keep at it. And I appreciate his perspective on, on advancing it, uh, tweaking it, and then keep moving it forward. So, Sashi, I, I just as behalf of WSU and your senior leadership partners, I wish you the best of luck and uh, for you and Rupa on this next step in your journey. So. Uh, Madam Chair, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Um, Sasi, I'm going to read a commendation, but you just I'll hand it over to you if you just have any um, words that you'd like to share. Oh, yeah. Um, thank you. Um, thank you, Kirk. And thank you. Um, thank you, Marty. I appreciate it. Uh, I feel very honored and humbled. Uh, so, you know, all these things happen. It's like it takes a village. Uh, and like Kirk pointed out, many of our successes, if you like to call them that, happens because others allow us to proceed and help us help us help them. So if at all I look at uh, our success as an organization, it came as a result of all of you and like the deans of the other departments and colleges uh, allowing us to work with them collaboratively. And I really want to highlight, I mean, that's one thing that I really enjoyed at WSU uh, is to work collaboratively and, and the reciprocity of helping each other. I think that's, a, I think that's a, the cougar spirit lives on. I think that's, I, I believe that in that this, I've seen that uh, in, in person and, and experienced it. And I would say that has brought WSU to the, this level of greatness and continue to accelerate that in the next phase. So again, I feel very humbled and very honored and uh, and have the privilege of working with all of you and allowing me to do that. So thank you so much. So thank we'll- Thank you, Sassi. I'm 
We'll find Saki at the blackjack tables there in Reno. And <laughs> so a glass of red wine in hand. Yeah, and, uh, yeah he's filling himself. So. Okay, well, um, whereas on January 15th, 2016, Washington State University interim president Daniel Bernardo appointed Dr. Pelag to serve as vice president for information services and chief information officer for Washington State University. And whereas during the past six years, Dr. Pillay has consistently worked to enhance the effectiveness and efficiency of information technology services and has dedicated himself to the betterment of all information services service operations at Washington State University. And whereas Dr. Pillay successfully led the modernization and consolidation of multiple key information technology services functions at Washington State University, and whereas Dr. Pillay established a comprehensive cybersecurity program at Washington State University and significantly reduced uh, the risk of data breaches and improved compliance with university regulations, and whereas Dr. Pillay implemented a multi-factor authentication system that minimized the potential for <laughs> unauthorized access to accounts and greatly reinforced security throughout the system, and whereas Dr. Pillay successfully deployed Workday, transitioning the university from a mainframe environment to one that better supports modern business processes, and whereas Dr. Pillay generated cost-effective, fiscally responsible methods to solve common and complex challenges within the information technology services at Washington State University. Now, therefore, be it resolved, that Washington State University Board of Regents express its deep appreciation, sincere gratitude to Vice President and Chief Information Officer Sasi Pillay for his vision and strength of leadership at Washington State University. And be it further resolved that the Board of Regents extends to Dr. Pillay its best wishes in the future endeavors and presents this resolution to him as a symbol of the Board's sincerest appreciation dated this day, the 27th of January, 2023. So I would just say, um, Sashi, that you were the very first person that I met at my very first Regent meeting, and you were so, so welcoming, as was your wonderful, beautiful wife, Ruba. And I just wish you and your daughters and all your grandchildren the very, very best. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I need to, at this time, um, I'm asking, I move that the Board of Regents adopt resolution 2301276780678. I'm asking for a second. Second. Thank you. Any further board discussion on this? Anybody that would like to offer Sashi a nice farewell? <laughs> Regent Marty, I, Marty, I have a similar um, experience. Uh, coming on board, uh, Sasha was the first person I met at orientation and immediately talked so far over my head, I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> and that was followed up by uh, when we uh, established the information center underneath the football stadium, where it looks like you're controlling a nuclear war. Um, just fascinating technology he brought to us and um, I, I can't say enough good things about things that were accomplished one of the things that just sort of slips through the cracks during that orientation he said we're really vulnerable here i i want to make sure we get an insurance policy for this information system stuff Almost before the ink was dry on the new insurance policy, we had a had a data leak, which had to do with uh, stolen data on a hard drive hidden somewhere at a home. But we were insured, and through that wise counsel and the excellent job that Sashi has done, not only moving us forward but protecting us from from the back. I can't say enough good things. It's been an honor to meet you, Sashi. And I, I do hope to have paths across in the future. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, again, best of.
Pardon? Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're in the middle of a board discussion. Apparently, I need a vote. So to make this official, can we please, um, for all those in favor of resolution 2301276786, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent. Motion passes. We wish you the very, very best. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, we are moving into our consent agenda and we have two items on our consent agenda before us today. The first is we need an approval of our minutes from our November 18th, 2022 Board of Regents meeting. And then the next one is we need, um, we are proposing the redesignation of the Doctor of Nursing Practice degree from a graduate to professional degree. Would any regents at this time um, like to remove either of these things from the consent agenda. Okay, then I am going to move forward for the approval of the consent agenda and I'm looking for a second. 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 Thank you. Any di board discussion on consent agenda? Okay, all of those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent, thank you. The uh, motion passes on consent agenda. We are going to do our reports from our shared governance group at this time. Um, Marty, Marty, yes. sorry. Um, yeah. Leslie has joined us. Uh, oh, she actually has two board meetings today. She finished up a presentation of the DU board and is with us now. So if it's okay, I would love to have her introduce herself. And uh, Leslie, welcome. Hey, good morning. Leslie, Welcome, Leslie. We're so glad to see you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here as well. Um, and I really look forward to meeting you all soon in person. Excellent. So Leslie, can you give the board just a little quick synopsis of uh, a little bit of your um, wonderful journey that you took from, was uh, it was Carolina, right? South Carolina? Yes. yes. And I appreciate yes. that you said Carolina. Yes. <laughs> we suffer and from a bit of a complex about that. <laughs> Yes, and now, it, now in Colorado, but well, oh, right. just give us a little snippet there for us, sure. Leslie. Um, I have just completed my 26th year in higher ed, and I'm at my fourth institution now, so Washington State will be the fifth. Um, I started at a technical college in South Carolina, which is probably the equivalent of a community college in the Washington area. Um, I had the opportunity to literally step across the hedge and start working at a USC system campus, the USC Beaufort campus. Um, that was then a two-year campus, and it evolved into being a four-year degree-granting institution at the time that I was there. And then in 2004, I moved up to the flagship campus in Columbia. Um, that role was both um, just for the Columbia flagship, but then it was expanded to be for the eight campus system as well. So there's four two, uh, four two year campuses, three four year campus and two med schools in addition to the Columbia campus all, all working together. Um, great role there, loved it. But I knew that I was going to be looking for something different as I had been there for quite some time and my president was retiring at South Carolina and I looked around and was thinking the public flagship route, but then the University of Denver really stole my heart such a different place different student mix. Um, going to a private from a public and so i've been here since 2019 and it's it's been a great ride but i'm, I'm looking forward to the opportunity to be back in a state system where the engagement with the communities is, is really the, the focus of, of the institution and what you're able to provide. And I would say to a person, the folks that I've talked with so far at Washington State, um, exceptionally engaged, very positive about the impact um, and realistic about the possibilities, but also very candid about where challenges are. And, and that's the kind of atmosphere I'm really looking forward to being part of. Thank you, Leslie. Um, we are so glad that you have chosen us. Um, and one really important thing is that Leslie has a daughter that goes to Gonzaga University. So she has gotten a little taste of Eastern Washington um, and even in the winter time. So I think we're fine, Kirk. Um, but uh, we root for the Zags just uh, when they're not playing WSU. Understood. So. Understood. Uh, <laughs> Kirk, would you like to say anything? No, I appreciate uh, uh, Sandra Haynes uh, and uh, was one of the co-leaders of our search. And we had a, uh, along with uh, uh, Jill McCluskey, who is the uh, director of the School of Economic Sciences, were co-chairs. 
Uh, we had a really strong applicant pool and really uh, Leslie rose to the top and we really appreciate uh, her working with us and really giving us a deep dive and looking at the opportunities. And uh, as we, we've moved, as the board knows, IT uh, into her portfolio and it's almost more like a chief operating officer. And we look forward to Leslie being a good strategic partner with the chancellors and the other senior leaders uh, at WSU. So um, Leslie, we appreciate in the middle of one board meeting, jumping on to <laughs> spend some time with us. So thank you and uh, look forward to having Leslie at one of our in-person board meetings uh, soon. Her official start date is May 1, but she'll be doing some work back and forth uh, with our finance and administration team with IT and others uh, at WSU across the system. And I think the final thing, it's important, Leslie sort of home base is going to be Spokane. Uh, and uh, she'll have an apartment here in Pullman and be going back and forth. But I think when we talk about system and where our senior leaders are, uh, we're, we're going to start seeing some people in different locations and, the, you know, in terms of their home location, always in Pullman. And I think that's a good, healthy thing for us moving forward. Well, one final question for Leslie, and I think it's probably the most important one is, um, how's your daughter feeling about mom moving uh, into her uh, backyard after she had left and gone away to college? Yeah, that, that great question. <laughs> she did tell me, stay out of my business, mom. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, welcome, and we look forward to seeing you um, in the coming weeks. Right. Thank so, you so much. Kate, Kate thank you. No. All right, we are, oh, go ahead. Uh, new hires have to sing the alma mater at the prison. Yeah. <laughs> it feels like hazing, but get back to me in a couple of minutes. <laughs> um, okay, we are going to move into our shared governance report. I um, would just ask, you know, that we be mindful of time as we move into these um, reports. And because um, as I'm trying to get us back on time a little bit here. So we are first up, we have um, uh, Mike Connell, our Vice President for Advancement and our CEO, um, as well as Lisa King, the President of the Foundation Board of Directors. And I think we saw Lisa, did we not, on the video? So that's a great story how that's all come together. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mike. Thanks, Marty, and good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry, thank you, Regent Dickinson, and good morning, everybody. Sure thank you to the entire board for the opportunity to present. Lisa is on our screen. We weren't sure of her uh, travel plans and availability. So um, I'll take the, the lead with the comments, but I'm grateful that she's here. And uh, again, a congratulations to her as being a, a member of the inaugural class of our Global Campus Society of Distinguished Alums. Um, real quickly again, welcome Leslie. Congratulations, Regent Ramos. That is an amazing honor. Holy moly. Uh, big thanks to Sasi for his leadership. He's been a wonderful partner for us, and I'm so appreciative of, of the commitment he and his team have to data security. Uh, also, Regent Dickinson, appreciate the, the positive comments regarding the Alumni Association and Mariah and her team. Uh, you are right. They do a great job, and I'm glad you had a chance to experience that firsthand. Kirk hit a, a couple highlights relative to our philanthropic activity. I will try to keep this portion a little brief. Uh, Year to date, as of this morning, uh, that number on your screen has increased to 55.65 million. So a little bit of January acti activity. We do continue to lag a little bit behind where I'd like to be and where we thought we'd be. Uh, this again is mostly a reflection of, of not closing as many of our larger gifts. We've talked in the past that large gifts influence our outcomes in terms of just the dollar side of things. Uh, in December, uh, some of you ha have some sense of scale, but some of you are less familiar uh, so just a quick recap, we processed 17,471 transactions in the month of December alone. That was an increase of uh, a little over 5% versus last year. Uh, so that's a sign that there is robust philanthropic activity. Uh, unfortunately, the value of those gifts was down 43% versus last year. And again, I know we talked last month a little bit about, you know, the stock market's down, we got inflation, there's all kinds of economic factors but the, we are lagging on big gifts. We do track you know, proposals that we have submitted where we're waiting to hear back from the donor. We're track the proposals we are intending to submit between now and the end of the fiscal year and then those that we intend to submit next fiscal year. So um, I, I, I continue to feel good about our activity. I'm, I'm grateful for the engagement of the leadership. Kirk continues to be very accessible. 
Um, some of your future action items on today's agenda reflect that engagement from leadership as we as we look at um, some of the, the physical or facility projects uh, where the, the donors have really stepped up and our university leaderships have, have, have been very engaged in those solicitations and engaging with our, our donors. I also want to just briefly comment. I know I think Marty, you mentioned this yesterday as well. Um, we are have completed that the 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 review and upgrade of the WSU facility naming policy and procedure, uh, EP9. Uh, this is years in the works, uh, very timely uh, relative to we, where we are in this early campaign planning. Um, huge thank you to Stacy Pearson, Daniel Hess, Matt Skinner, their teams, very much a team effort. Uh, we're going to be stronger going forward now that we have that kind of all put together and packaged in a much better from a process standpoint. So I'm grateful for everybody's willingness to roll up their sleeves and do that hard work. Um, real quickly, the endowment, you know, uh, the reports of the endowment lagged a little bit. So the most recent number we have is November. So November 30th, the endowment was at 644 million, uh, continues to be an important source of revenue across the WSU system, whether that be for scholarships, for programmatic excellence, for endowed positions. Um, so 644 is the updated number at the end of November. Uh, Kirk reference, we will be giving, bringing together small groups uh, in the next couple, three months to hear from Kirk and I regarding uh, what we think of as early campaign uh, themes and thinking to get their feedback. So we'll call those campaign leadership briefings um, and look forward to hearing from our best donors and prospects about some of the themes we're seeing come out of the campuses, colleges, and units in terms of their vision for the future and how philanthropy can impact that. Um, in my written report, I talked a little bit about our, our upgrade of our CRM. Uh, that is also uh, coming closer to the finish line. We'll probably be able to flip the switch in spring or summer on that project. Um, that the, what we think of as the donor and alumni database, there are more than 500,000 records on that database. So this conversion has also taken us years. Uh, of course, there's significant expense I'm grateful for it, 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 almost every person involved in advancement has helped in some way uh, as, as we work through this upgrade. Uh, and we look forward to having the new system in place and the efficiencies that will come with that. It's, it's to some degree, it's our version of Workday. And, and you know, everybody at WSU now is familiar with the Workday conversion. Um, and, and it's the analogy is, is uh, I think, appropriate in terms of the amount of time and work and, and the upcoming efficiencies that will come from that. Uh, maybe just one wrap up comment. We we have uh, completed the recruitment of our new class of members of the WSU Foundation Board of Directors. So we've got seven new directors on board. We did their orientation last week, no, earlier this week, I'm sorry, and their first board meeting will be in February. So I'm really excited to have uh, that, that class join our board. Uh, the board will end up uh, for, for this coming year, 23 members. Uh, wonderful group, very excited to have them join us. So uh, maybe just, I, I know Marty, you, you referenced a little tight on time, so I'll kind of wrap it up. I appreciate Kirk's kind words. Uh, I um, certainly welcome any questions that anybody has for me relative to either the philanthropic development side and or the alumni relations side. And then I think we're gonna kick it over to Lester while Mariah is on. She also was having some tra travel questions. And so, um, any questions from anybody? Questions, comments, Kirk, go ahead. Yes, um, Mike, I think you and I talked a little bit yesterday that at one of the Thursday morning Regent yeah. sessions, we want to do one of the same sort of interactive presentation things on campaign uh, and where we are and things like that, rather than trying to get groups of regions to do it at different times or whatever. Uh, these are not Mike and I doing a death by PowerPoint. They're intended to be very focused and lots of discussion about direction for philanthropy at WSU. So I'm going to work with uh, Des and Marty to schedule a time like that at one of our Thursday morning kind of strategic sessions uh, so that you all are seeing what we're doing and we want your input as well. So just want to uh, make sure that I put that out there. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, Kurt. Other questions or comments? 
Mike, what is, did you, is there a goal of what you would like the endowment to get to in the next, you know, five years or just from the endowment at the $644 million mark, what does that look like going forward? Thanks, Marty. Uh, I'll probably focus more in the next three to five or even eight years on additions to the endowment. That's something we can influence. We cannot influence market performance. And so as we look at how we execute this campaign, we will probably end up with an endowment addition goal, but I tend to be a little hesitant to get too carried away on size of endowment. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah I get that. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions um, before we kick it over to, is it Lester Barbero and to Mariah? Um, uh, Chair Dickinson, I was just gonna ask um, Mike, from, uh, from your perspective, uh, certainly, I, I would think that um, having the board engaged and understanding how we can help aid you in your efforts, um, having these uh, conversations and um, with you and, and President Schultz, a, a piece of that might be um, the ways in which we can help support, because um, it's probably each of us in a different way, um, but having full board support probably helps you in your work and the way in which you can convey the board's commitment to WSU and uh, probably makes it easier and a stronger ask. I know um, certainly at the uh, WSU Vancouver level, we as community leaders all try to lean into the chancellor scholarship so that we have full support um, within that space that we operate in. And so um, I'm excited to hear that you and Kirk are gonna be you know, having these smaller group conversations so that we both understand the endowment and we certainly understand our role in helping to support you in your work. Thank you, Regent Shower. Yes, Kirk and I will integrate that into our comments and, and the engaged conversation we look forward to having at the upcoming Thursday session once we get that on the books. Uh, to your point, um, the, the participation and leadership from the Board of Regents is empowering uh, across the entire development spectrum. And so I'm grateful for your recognition of that, your endorsement of that. Uh, yeah, I'm fully on board. I'm grateful for the Regents that do support WSU philanthropically, and it sends a very clear and powerful message. Thank you. Other questions? Okay, I, anything else? Mike, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Um, I'd like to introduce um, President-elect Lester Barbero, who is actually um, presenting for um, the current president, Mark Schuster, along with then Mariah Mackey, our executive director. So. Lester. Lester, can right. you take your. Yeah, thank you. Um, good there morning, everyone. And, uh, good morning. Hey, uh, great background. Uh, here. Happy Law Friday. Um, um, my name is Lester Barbera. I'm the president-elect of the WCU Alumni Association. Um, it's an honor to uh, be speaking with all of you this morning. Um, just a little bit more about myself. Um, I'm a 2010 grad of the Pullman campus. Um, I studied materials engineering and minor in mechanical engineering. Um, while I was attending WSU, I was serving in the U.S. Army Reserve. Um, two and a half years ago, I retired after two years of service. Um, quick shout out to all the um, current and veteran um, coups out there um, thank you for your service. Um, I'm currently employed by Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. I'm a mechanical engineer. Um, I work on uh, non-nuclear seawater, freshwater piping systems. Um, next week, I'm actually gonna be traveling to Rhode Island to certify um, the new USS Iowa. So um, I'm excited for that um, opportunity to um, be part of that team. Um, I'm glad to be um, here this morning to talk about the World's Grace Alumni Association. Um, just a few updates. So um, next Wednesday and Thursday, we will be hosting our Spring Leadership Conference. Um, we're going to be able to get to learn more about the university, uh, discuss ways uh, to support um, WSU and strengthen our engagement with our chapters and clubs. Uh, as a former um, chapter president, one of my favorite things is to um, share best practices with our um, with our um, chapter and club um, president. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, in addition, we're, we are also delighted to um, debut our new volunteer playbook, uh, the comprehensive guide for our volunteers covering, covering everything from, from university priorities and 
to how to plan a chapter club event. Um, I know for the staff, um, it's been a labor of, labor of love and years in the making, and um, we know it's going to be um, very helpful for our um, for our volunteers. Um, on Friday, February 24th, um, we're going to be hosting our third annual Women's Leadership Summit. Um, this year's summit will highlight WCU alumna from across the one WSU system and showcase how WSU has played an integral role in their professional journeys. Um, we are delighted to announce panelists for, from each campus. Uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Schneck from the Spokane, from Spokane campus. Um, she is the executive director of environmental stewardship for, um, from Providence. Monkia Braugeson from the Global Campus. She is the Global Vice President of Schneider Electric. Shavy Winters from the Vancouver Campus. She is the Manager of the Northwest Regional Office, U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Savannah navarro Creeks from the Tri-Cities Campus. She is a Racial Equality Analyst. Whitney Ward from the Pullman Campus. Um, she's a co-anchor of Krem, Krem 2 News Early Evening Newscasts. And Aylworth from the Everett Campus. Uh, she is a electrical engineer at Crane Aerospace and Electronics. Um, we'll also be hosting a watch party at the DCU Spokane Campus. And, and we'll also be hosting a live Q&A se um, session. Um, this will be the first time we'll be will be um, organizing such an in-person connection at this event. Um, so if you're at the Spokane campus, um, we'd love to have you join us. A uh, quick word about um, Wine by Cougars, uh, the ninth edition of the limited um, edition Cougar Co Collectors series, um, Cougar 9, uh, produced by Basalt um, Sellers. Um, it's almost sold out, so um, grab a ball while you can. Um, and we're also pleased to announce that Five Star Sellers will create Cougar 10, hitting the market in early fall. Five Star is out of Walla Walla. Its winemaker is Cameron Rushton, and he is a 2010 Connors grad. Um, next, um, WSU is heading to the desert next month, um, held in conjunction with the WSU Board of Directors Retreat, WSU Evening with Leadership will be held in Scottsdale, Arizona on February 16th. Uh, the program will feature President Schultz and BCU leadership. Um, after, the, after the reception, the evening will continue uh, with a watch party for our men's basketball team as we take on Oregon State. Um, I will be there, so looking forward to joining uh, most of you. Um, on March 5th, Cougars of the Desert will be held in Palm Springs, California. Um, so the programming includes a golf tournament and um, a social with special guest speakers, um, Rowos and Executive Vice President and WSU Chancellor Elizabeth Chilton and WSU Head Coach, Head Volleyball Coach Jen Greeny. And there will also be a live auction with proceeds going to WSU Student Scholarships. Um, on behalf of the staff, I want to send our gratitude to Student Affairs for their um, support for this event. Um, we're excited for a WSU leadership involvement and we expect participation from several campus leaders and other academic units. Um, in, con in conjunction uh, with this event, uh, we will also hold another um, men's basketball watch party in, on March 2nd in La Quinta, California. Um, we're excited to announce that um, class reunions are back and they are set for June 2nd and 3rd. Um, we're excited to welcome 16, um, 16 classes. Um, we're excited to welcome coups from 16 different classes. Um, uh, we will also pilot an engagement activity on the WSU Spokane campus this spring and plan to expand engagement to all campuses in 2024. And then finally, a quick word on the 2022 football season. Um, uh, this past season, um, the Alumni Association held 626 watch parties throughout the season with over 7,500 attendees. You know, fantastic engagement, you know, meeting, you know, Cougs locally. And right, I know in Hawaii, I welcome a lot of um, visiting Cougs. So that's, it's always a pleasure to, um, you know, talk about, you know, past experiences. You know, in Pullman and also, you know, talk about, you know, you know, Hawaii and the culture and the people here. So it's always a pleasure, you know, doing that. And um, 
The Jimmy Kimmel LA Bowl pregame uh, was a fantastic example of expanding the WSU brand of excellence to a wider audience of Cougs. Um, we were able to cross promote um, and support alumni association, foundation and athletic events for the week in LA and hold watch parties um, across the country on several campuses. So um, for all the chancellors and WSU leadership who attended the pregame, um, Thank you support. Thank you for your support and um, connecting with our um, alumni from across from uh, across the country. Um, I believe we have a video of the of some of the pregame highlights. Um, yeah. All right, that's all I got. Um, thank you, Regent Dixon, and to the board for the opportunity to um, speak with, speak with you this morning. Um, I welcome any questions or comments. Lester, what an outstanding report, and uh, what an outstanding Coug alumni you are. My gosh, we are so glad to have you coming in as the uh, chair elect. What you just represent so many wonderful things about WSU. But thank you for your service, and and thank you for the. Um, time you spent here and now the work you're going to go do next week all of that is really really impressive and uh we will be anxious to have you with us next year and hear some more about your adventures yeah i'm looking forward to it any questions um for lester or mike or mariah at this time as we wrap up the work again mike and mariah i think just based on lester's report there's an energy um, and a vibe and an engagement level that you guys have really, really infused um, into this in the last couple of years. And just thank you so much as a fellow alum and getting to participate. I too will be in Phoenix. Um, so I will get to meet you in person there, Lester. Looking forward. Okay, moving on. Thank you again. Um, so good news. Um, Judy left, but I got somebody else to join us in this room with us. So um, she was brave enough to come sit next to me. But um, we have our faculty senate chair, Christine Horn, joining us this morning. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So as you might imagine, the drops in enrollment, the drops in national rankings, and the repeated cuts to academic units have left faculty uh, pessimistic and concerned about the future of WSU. And I think in this environment, clear, concrete communication can be really helpful. I think you get that in these kinds of meetings and faculty often don't. So um, we've been talking with President Schultz about communicating um, more explicitly with faculty. I think there's really three kinds of communication that are, are particularly important. One is clarifying our priorities, um, where, where WSU is going and how we're aligning our resources with that so that faculty really know uh, what the plan is. And, um, we appreciate the work of Chris Hoyt on this and working to uh, sort of get the strategic plan out there. Enrollment is clearly high on our list of priorities. And so providing regular updates on enrollment, the concrete things that WSU is doing is also uh, being really useful. And Kirk is providing, the, uh, providing those to us. And we're grateful for Saichi and his team and also for the work that the advisors, the provost team, and many, many people at the university are doing on this. We've also asked President Schultz to provide faculty with regular updates on financial health, WSU's financial health, including what WSU is doing to reduce costs. Our, uh, the, newly, our, our, the budget that is going to be more transparent given the new budget model is gonna be great. We appreciate the work that Elizabeth and Stacy and others have done on this. Um, and we look forward to that transparency. And we're also really pleased that uh, President Schultz is providing us with these financial updates and we look forward to working with him on those. In faculty senate, as an executive, we're trying to make positive, you know, how can we contribute to this larger endeavor given what's within our purview? And so as an executive, we've been thinking about um, what we can do in terms of curriculum, since that's squarely in our wheelhouse. Um, and we've been focusing on 
thinking about new degrees and extension of degrees and being really explicit about costs and enrollment, the implications for costs and enrollment. With regard to enrollment, faculty have uh, tended to have, I think traditionally a sort of, you, we build it and they will come sort of orientation and think, oh, chemistry is so great if we could do this degree and blah, and students will, you know, it, without really thinking explicitly and carefully about what would be appealing to students. Um, so we're trying to sort of shift the, the mindset a little bit to be thinking really explicitly about what will appeal to students and their families. Uh, in terms of costs, faculty also tend to be optimistic about this and say, of course, we can add this additional program with no new resources. Of course, we'll just <laughs> add it to what we're already doing. Um, and so we're trying to get faculty and units to think really explicitly about and completely about the cost, the full costs of what it is that they're proposing to do. And then we're also trying to shift uh, people to think more explicitly as well about um, how programming serves the campus and the system. So instead of just saying, well, we're going to extend this major to this campus because we can, really thinking about what serves the needs of the people in that area and what serves the needs of the system. Um, and so we're hoping that these efforts will help in, in some way uh, our little piece of the um, enrollment puzzle. Uh, so that's, that's all I have for you today. If you have questions, happy to answer them. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the three components of clarifying priorities, continued transparency and discussion on enrollment, and then um, engagement around financial health. I, I think the board definitely hears you on that. And I know Kirk um, hears you on that. He, it's pretty consistent when he's communicating to um, the regents around those things. I love the concept, Christine, and um, would like the faculty to note that we appreciate the global thinking around what serves the needs of the system that's that is an evolution too right for the faculty and it's a journey that many have been on around coming out just of pullman or just of vancouver or wherever you might be of looking at the system wide so thank you that is actually really exciting to kind of get an alignment around that so um feedback questions um that you might have for christine while we have her here today Maybe I'll just ask um, Regent Redmond's question that she usually asks, what's the morale? What's the morale of faculty? Yeah. I, I, it's not very good. <laughs> to me. Yeah. yeah, I think I think there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of concern because these we keep faculty see these bad things happening. Um, and so it, that, there is a and they're tired, right? Mm -hmm. So bad things happening plus just fatigue. Um, and so that's, I think, part of why we think that really concrete communication is important, because when you're anxious and you just sort of have this free floating anxiety, you see all the bad things and you don't know exactly what's being done, then it makes people more anxious. So, um, so yeah, I would say morale is not great. And we're, we're, you know, we're trying to think of what we can do. Everybody's trying to think of what we can do to, to work on that. Um, yeah, I would, you know, I think, um, Christine, you know, speaking from some, I, and I think many from the, from the private sector, there is a fatigue um, when you're dealing with these external things around recession and just the environment we're all kind of trying to function through. And then you have some of the challenges that the university um, has faced for several years and faculty has been a good partner in that and appreciate that you continue to be, but, um, valid reasons for just feeling like it's heavy. It's a heavy load. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you for the acknowledgement of that and for the honesty with that. We appreciate that. Other feedback um, or questions you might have? Well, on behalf of the Board of Regents, um, please uh, have the faculty understand and know that we hear you and we're listening and that Kirk is here, hears you and is listening and Elizabeth and Daryl and Sandra and um, uh, Mel and uh, we're, we're, we're getting there, but it's a journey. So thank you and please continue the journey and uh, stick with us. We will, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> okay, um, moving next to our ASWSU Global President, Remy Plate, and I actually, I think our very own um, Rianne Chilton will be giving that report. So she Thanks just can't so really get away from that role. Like they just keep pulling her back in. 
Yeah, thank you so much, Chair, Dick uh, Chair Dickinson. The um, ASWC Global Leadership was really excited to get to address the board, um, but they all have work and classes at this time, and just none of them were able to make it. So they, I met with them, and they asked me if I could hit a few highlights uh, of their report. So I will uh, do that now. Um, so uh, a few things, they've had wonderful engagement in their uh, executive leadership, and they have a full uh, executive board, which is really exciting. One of the things global campus students struggle with, and you'll see it through kind of their report, um, echoed is just engagement um, in sort of broader structures like, uh, like student government. Um, they've, uh, they're have they leading a number of efforts to uh, get students engaged really uh, with the system, um, give, uh, help them have a sense that they are part of the larger, larger uh, KUG community. Um, they have, this is something I've uh, admired from them for years actually, have a really robust reimbursement um, system. Um, one such reimbursement structure they do is for sporting events. So um, students can uh, apply for reimbursement for attending a WC sporting event anywhere. Um, they also have a pretty popular uh, student book club. And this year they're especially uh, working through books that are written by and that um, feature themes around uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and written by authors with diverse backgrounds. Um, they also have a couple of in-person events that they host. One of them is an annual student summit. This is sort of like a career fair meets um, sort of uh, inform informational um, uh, sessions around mental health awareness um, and DEI. Um, as well as uh, they get opportunities for students to do headshots and uh, networking and that sort of thing. The other in-person, and it's a hybrid event that they do, and they've just started doing this recently in the last couple of years, is um, their commencement and reception ceremony. So they are hosting it this year, a hybrid format in Everett, Washington. Uh, in the past, uh, I believe global campus students who wanted to attend an in-person commencement would um, typically go to Pullman. Um, and uh, as you can imagine, that could be uh, sort of a travel uh, difficulty for some students. So Everett was a, a little bit easier um, area for students to access from the airport. Um, so they're doing that uh, hybrid event this year. Really excited to get to celebrate uh, the students' accomplishments in this really big way. There are a number of areas that they're working on in advocacy. One of the big ones that I've heard students talk about a few times now is related to kind of academic success um, and engagement in their online platform. Um, so one of the kind of uh, areas that we get feedback from pretty broadly from global students is that there is some variability in um, just technology literacy of the global campus professors. Um, and that, especially when this is your primary learning environment, can affect um, their experience. So that's something that they're working on, um, finding systematic ways to provide feedback about. Um, and then basic needs, so getting back to that reimbursement program that they have, um, not only do they do that sort of sporting event uh, reimbursement, but they also have really um, great uh, programs focused on reimbursing for childcare, groceries, mental health and wellness. So while other campuses oftentimes have some sort of central hub like um, the food pantry um, or the um, health services center, um, the global campus of course doesn't quite have that. So instead they have um, the structure for reimbursing when students do engage in um, services that they need um, that help them to be more successful um, and help care for their, their basic and essential needs. Um, so yes, that program's been running for years and is running strong. Um, and then just broadly, um, helping students feel connected to uh, the other campuses, to the system large, uh, broadly. So they're continuing to work on sort of um, events and services that help students really feel like they are part of the community. So that is uh, what I'll share uh, from them. I may not be able to answer questions, but um, I do think that they're going to uh, try to review. So if you have any uh, or uh, review a uh, minute. So if you have any comments you'd like me to relay back to them, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Rianne. That was very nice. That was very polite to not yell out. You're, you're muted, Marty. Um. <laughs>
but any questions that you might have, and by the way, I'm not controlling the mute button, which is Des's dream come true, but um, uh, any questions for Rianne at this time? Okay, thank you, we appreciate you. Next, we have our GPSA president, Samantha um, Edgerton. Good morning, all. There she is. There she is. Yep. Good morning, all. all right, thank you so much for uh, having me this morning and giving me the opportunity to speak to you all. Um, before I get started on uh, what GPSA has been up to, I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, some of our guest uh, speakers that we've had uh, this semester, Chancellor Chilton, Vice Chancellor Taylor, and Vice President Mackey. We really appreciate your time um, to make, you know, to make time to come speak with GPSA. And I know it's not always the most friendly environment and you all though really, really do, uh, make us in leadership feel connected, uh, to administration though. So, um, you know, I just wanted to give you a shout out and thank you, uh, for, for keep coming back. We really do appreciate it. So uh, first off, I would just like to uh, talk about uh, some of our operations uh, uh, successes that have been happening in GPSA. I don't know um, if I refer back to my uh, fall talk, uh, we were having, we were still like 20 senators down. Um, we are only two senators down now. So we actually did have um, a complete Senate filled up, but as is normal with GPS, GPSA operations throughout the year, um, we just had a couple of resignations, but this is um, definitely a huge check mark in our success uh, sex, success box. Um, we also had uh, two of the GPSA executive board uh, resign as well. One due to uh, his impending graduation, he received a full full time job. So well done for him um, and uh, our community chairs of uh, community affairs chair. So we are currently recruiting for that and have students who have expressed an interest in filling those positions. And the reason I'm talking about some, you know, what some could consider are uh, the boring aspects of GPSA, the operations, um, this actually um, circles around to my main point about how being back, um, you know, at full capacity on campus, but, uh, you know, using, utilizing both in-person and digital and virtual uh, meeting capabilities has really just lit a fire, so to speak, under uh, the graduate students and their dedication to advocacy. So this year is the first time in a while uh, I have really felt this uh, full participation, uh, sorry, participation of uh, the graduate students with GPSA. So I think that is a good thing. Um, I do think that uh, with that, uh, as a leader, it, it's part of part of my job also to temper expectations, of course, because with being so, you know, with having so many people um, dedicated to um, participating now in advocacy uh, among a group of students that uh, not all the time are known for um, leaving their study bubbles and um, involving themselves in the life of campus. This is kind of a big thing. And so that includes tempering expectations and trying to focus on uh, what I call, of course, winnable goals as well as um, a different, um, sorry, I lost, I lost my train of thought there because um, when the, Never mind. I always go on. Sorry, I always do this uh, grand circular. So, okay, there's my funny part. But <laughs> I actually lost my notes, and I think I can do this <laughs> um, going forward. So, um, another thing that I wanted to uh, highlight today is our programming efforts. Uh, our programming chair, uh, Mag Magdana uh, Kondaritze, uh, who is our chair of programming has just done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, I say uh, we had uh, GPSA sponsored events um, throughout the first uh, semester, which, uh, you know, uh, we've always had good programming, but this year it's just been taken to a new level. And not only with that programming is it taken to a new level, but um, participation is also happening. So again, this is so important among uh, a student body, uh, traditionally not 
well known uh, for their public uh, public connections that they're making. So this has been great. Uh, uh, Magda, one of the, her, um, I want to highlight one of the best accomplishments was of course having a full day dedicated to mindfulness and wellness. And this included, uh, you know, a yoga session, um, you know, also um, a mindfulness uh, guest lecture, uh, as well as uh, she started a GPSA book club, which sometimes you may just have two people, but that's still two people you know, engaging away from the, the rigors of intellectual study for intellectual engagement with another person. So um, finally, I wanted to uh, talk in terms of successes about our coup day at the Capitol uh, that just happened uh, this past Monday. So this is great timing. Um, this is the first, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rianne or Marwa, that this is the first full in-person attended Coug Day uh, since uh, the pandemic started. And uh, needless to say, we had uh, the most graduate students who have ever attended something like this. Uh, I can't imagine four years ago when I started in GPSA, uh, getting more than three people. Uh, and normally those are three people who are required to go uh, to be interested. <laughs> so that's that's also the good news is uh, the fact that uh, so many people are taking an interest in what can be done at the legislative level. And I think that's an important point that we need to continue as GPSA leadership uh, to impress on graduate students that not every solution is going to be found uh, by WSU administration. Um, these are different types of uh, wants and needs that can be only be answered, you know, at the legislative level. So the more people involved, you know, uh, in local politics and school politics, all that stuff is hopefully a way to um, encourage more participation in, you know, uh, more broadly in terms of obtaining things that graduate students need and want. So a couple of the items that we focused on that um, I know are going to be getting traction, um, of course, were childcare. Um, we did talk about this in the fall that, you know, uh, Marwa Ali, our vice president, had uh, been working on offering more options for gra uh, working, you know, graduate student families uh, for childcare, uh, particularly with our connections with the YMCA of uh, the Palouse. But this is all now um, at the state uh, state um, government level too, um, because this is uh, something that I, think, I believe uh, many legislators uh, gave feedback that they had no idea that uh, childcare is something that. Uh, students would even be interested in. And I think it's a point well uh, it's a point well taken that we should also say this also does affect, believe it or not, undergrads too, especially when you're talking about, you know, um, the global uh, WSU noticing the average age is 31. So uh, Vancouver is the commuter campus. So I think childcare is an important issue that we've um, definitely brought to the forefront and hopefully that will get more traction. And also this, um, this is a, a recent uh, success with the University of California system that uh, GPSA and uh, ASWCU proposed uh, to the Washington State Letter Legislature, of course, is uh, for covered uh, tuition for Native American students in the state of Washington as our efforts to move beyond just a land grant, you know, as part of, to adopt it as part of a land grant mission and to move beyond just making land acknowledgements that we put this statement to action, um, particularly when you look at statistics, um, you know, over the last several years, um, you know, we've had increased in enrollment with, you know, among um, uh, African Americans, um, Latinx, uh, Chicanx student populations, but enrollment across, you know, both nationally and I believe statewide, but um, among uh, Indigenous and Native American uh, students has actually decreased. So this is, um, I think, a good way to fulfill our land grant mission. And then graduate student concerns, I promise. Um, I, won't bring, I, I won't bring that, I didn't bring that list with me today, I promise. Um, but as far, as far as a couple uh, concerns that, you know, we are focusing on, um, we do have a couple uh, 
tax issues that we need to do more um, research on. For instance, the the you know student government uh, positions that receive stipends are on uh, 1099, so that is ending up uh, adversely affecting our tax burdens. So this is something that we're going to be looking for looking forward to uh, bringing to uh, the attention of. Uh, those who need to hear about this. And uh, we are still working uh, with uh, uh, grad students on their concerns about uh, not only the availability of housing, but uh, rising housing costs. Um, stipends are always uh, at the forefront of concerns and um, of course, food security. But for today, I would like to uh, leave you all with, you know, my feelings of, positivity about what we have accomplished um, in terms of the active student government uh, among the graduate uh, students that we've brought together uh, this, sem this last semester and moving forward into spring, as well as our uh, success at Coup Day at the Capitol and involving so many graduate students in the legislative process. So I appreciate your time and thank you so much for uh, bearing with me when I uh, go off my script. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Samantha. Uh, great report. And really love that um, we have Cougs at the Capitol. Uh, you're doing more than just kind of your advocacy work. Just by being there and having that coordinated effort, you're enhancing the work that Kirk and uh, uh, President Schultz and that um, Colleen Kerr and Chris Mulek are doing as well. So that's important. And uh, uh, I appreciate that. Any um, questions for Samantha at this time from um, our Board of Regents? Samantha, on a funny note, uh, um, with your two-person book club, I tried to start a family book club, but out of my three kids, I had two in graduate school, and they said I was crazy if they thought that they wanted to read another book. So um, the Dickinson Book Club did not get kicked off last year, but I'm going to give it another whirl. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, please pass along our um, thank yous to everybody doing great work there and appreciate your leadership, Samantha. Will do. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, our last report is um, from Angie Center, who is the chair of our administrative, administrative professional advisory council. So I'll turn it to Angie. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so I also have all good news to bring, which is always kind of fun. Uh, we are continuing to meet monthly as an entire constituency group, and um, we're continuing to see our attendance grow. So our last meeting, we had 90 participants um, and about 20 on campus here in Pullman. And then those are recorded and sent to our YouTube stream and linked to our website as, as people can't necessarily take our um, allotted one hour. So we're actually seeing hundreds of views of those meetings, um, post meetings. So really excited to see uh, attendance grow in those. And we are actively auditing our non-Pullman communication plans to make sure that we're being system wide and having a strategic focus on communicating with um, extension as well so that they're getting all the information um, that they need. So really seeing some great growth there. I'm very happy about that. We are trying to bring speakers and topics in that we feel have a lot of rele relevancy to our constituency group um, so that we can get some specific questions answered um, and things that are very easy and accessible. We know our APs are extremely busy, and if they have to dig for any information, um, that's just a lift what we want to take off of them. So in November, we were able to talk about the new website launch and the updated brand standards, and so we had Phil Weiler come in and his team, and that was great because it was that's just happy information that we can share. The, the website update is great. Um, so for those of you who don't know, we have a WSU website. Now Pullman has their own, like the other campuses. Um, but we have some definite questions and concerns from some of our people in regards to um, how students would access registration information. So Phil's team did a great job of being able to answer those questions live. Um, and I think there's a lot of value in that um, so that we don't have concerns kind of brewing on the back end. And there's also some great updates to the brand standards that are just one click downloads uh, for our constituency group. So it was nice just to show them that website and let them know that that's nothing that they have to create. If they just can download it, it's something given um, free from the university. So that was a fun meeting. 
Um, and we were able to kind of continue that um, goodwill in November. We did a community building activity where we hosted a photo contest for all APs on all locations. And we had 30, over 30 entries to that. And you can still view them on our website. We announced the winners in December. And we had entries from four campus locations, Pullman, Vancouver, Tri-Cities, and Spokane. And the winners got cans of Cougar Gold cheese. So of course, everyone loves Cougar Gold. And so that was just kind of something fun to do on the side. Again, that wasn't a huge lift, um, but kind of provides some uh, campus unity for us. And then in December, we had uh, WCU Police Chief Gary Jenkins come. Um, and he just wanted to talk about the changes to the Pullman Police Force, um, given some things that were in the media. And of course, um, talk to us about some campus safety concerns in December and January on a lot of our locations. It's dark, it's cold, it's slippery, um, things like that. And then in support of what's going on, on across the border at U of I and un the unfortunate spillover here to our Pullman campus. And so APAC has been very loud and very vocal in our support of any of our colleagues that are struggling through that situation and really working to eliminate any stigma in association with needs for mental health services. So if any of our colleagues are struggling, not only with um, the murder investigation at WSU uh, or at uh, U of I and the um, graduate student who was here at Pullman, but also we've had a recent shooting in Yakima. We've had a barista almost kidnapped straight from her little coffee shop in Tacoma. I mean, there's, there's a lot going on in the state that that's very scary and affects people differently. And so do we just want to be very, very loud to our to our constituency group? If you're struggling, mental health services are available and that's normal and that's safe and that we want them to take a bit, um, advantage of those services. And then in um, January, we had Christine Holt from the vice president. She's the vice president of strategy, planning and analysis, come and talk about the new um, goals um, that are coming down. So drive to 25 kind of morphing now into some new strategic goals for the university and really wanted to congratulate her and, and show her thanks for her to come as those are not 100% concrete. And that's kind of a scary place to put out some strategic goals when um, they're, they're still being evolved. But how much are people appreciated getting to hear those early? Because if APs are not pulling on the same end of the rope when those are released, um, it, it's going to be an uphill swim. And so instead of the university saying, here's the goals, everybody do that now. Um, we were able to just kind of see them early and, and have some input and answers, ask some questions of that. So really appreciated having a voice early on in that. So shout out to Christine and, and her uh, willingness to do that for us. Um, our constituency group is also really excited about getting a, a seat at, some at the table to some task force and committees as much as I love sitting on committees. Um, they're, they're very valuable sometimes. So I have a seat at the, on the Task Force of Fine Arts here in Pullman under Elizabeth Chilton. And we strongly feel that the arts is part of a well-balanced um, employee health and wellness initiative. So um, we do think that those are extremely important. Um, and we also think a vibrant arts community is part of a value add of being a WSU employee. So we appreciate that that is something that's on the table. Um, and that, again, that we have a seat at that table. And I'm also on the strategic planning committee um, here in Pullman on the employee health and wellness initiative. Um, so again, very appreciative to have a seat at the table to bring constituency concerns as strategic initiatives are being created instead of having them just kind of dumped on our lap to deal with. Um, so thank you, Elizabeth Chilton, for including APAC in both of those initiatives that we feel very, very strongly about. Some other uh, great news is we had a special election for um, executive committee or council members that has um, gone through and they've been elected and we had more applicants than we had positions for. So again, sometimes that can be an uphill swim. That has not been the case for APAC this year. Um, so thank you for everyone that applied. Please keep applying because um, we want to have you. 
Some other great news is we added 88 new AP employees in the system in November and December. And as wonderful as that number is, the better number is we only lost 12. <laughs> so we are actually seeing an increase in human capital of those boots on the ground. Um, so shout out to HR uh, and to Central Marketing that's done a lot of work to get us um, what the the human capital that we need and then the great WSU um, colleagues that are continuing to grow. So we have still some hiring work to do, obviously, as everyone does, um, but that was a tremendous amount of growth and we're really excited about it. There are a few constituency concerns that we are currently investigating in order to find resources for, and these will be topics of upcoming meetings or webinars for our employees. One is broader accessibility of the employee tuition waiver program. Um, and so that is something that there isn't very well understood and it wasn't well understood even by our executive committee. So our executive committee met with some individuals on campus for us to get a better understanding of it. Um, and we are currently working to get them at an upcoming meeting. That's a wonderful value add to be a WSU employee is that tuition waiver program. Um, but like I said, it's not very well understood. And so how can we make that really, really easy to understand and accessible for those that need it? So that's coming down the pipeline. Uh, we're also gonna investigate some access to end of life planning resources. Um, not the most positive topic, but something that um, a lot of our constituency have asked about. Um, I know I my parents are kind of getting to that level in life. And so I need to think about that. Um, so we're going to look at that. Obviously, campus safety concerns um, as things continue to come out into the news and how can we be supportive. Um, the big one is going to be the overtime exempt classification changes. So lots and lots and lots of questions about that. And that is our upcoming meeting in February. Um, so really excited that we um, are going to have some just live one on one time with HRS to come in and explain that. We know that it's not a one size fits all for all of our um, employees. And so we have employees with very specific questions on how does this impact me moving forward? And so they really value the ability to get to ask those questions. And we have been um, aggregating um, questions through our email. So if anybody ever wants to get a hold of us, it's APAC at wsu.edu, super simple. Um, and that's how we aggregate those concerns um, and get those questions to HRS in advance. So they'll really be able to tailor that presentation to this particular group of staff. Um, and then we get to ask one-on-one -on -one questions, which I'm super excited about. Um, just a reminder that APAC Appreciation Week is set for April 10th through the 14th. It's a week long celebration of APAs. Um, and so that's, that's super exciting and, and we'll do awards and everything. I only have one more thing to mention that's not on this slide, um, but is near and dear to my heart. And we have a DEI committee. It's actually our most probably active committee uh, with the largest membership, which I think is amazing. Um, but I've really tasked them not necessarily with including um, DEI initiatives, but once we get a diverse population here as APs, what do we do with them? How are we supporting them? And so they have come up with a mastermind pilot and it's really short, I'm gonna read it to you because I don't wanna butcher any of the amazing work that they've done, but this is um, what we're working on right now. And it says a mastermind group is a group of peers looking at a similar issue within their organization unit or department. This mastermind pilot would bring together five or six directors to explore the question, how do I incorporate diversity, equity, and inclusion into my unit? This pilot program would meet once a month for an hour over six months. During each session, each participant would share an update on how they are working to include DEI into their respective unit. After the participant shares, the other participants would ask helpful questions or offer insights to help the person giving their update to think more critically about how we could incorporate DEI into their department. So I'm really, really excited about that because I, I feel like we'll actually get um, some upward momentum and how do we support diverse APs um, once they're here in our in our system. So kudos. Okay, thank you, you, Angie. I'm going to just thank you and probably have you wrap up at this point. I um, apologize. We have a meaty rest of the agenda to get to. Thank you so much for your report.
and for your information. Do we have any questions for Angie at this time? Okay, thank you, Angie, for joining us. Okay, next we are going to move into our strategic and operational um, excellence committee report. Um, and I am going to turn that over to Regent Shetler to walk us through um, his committee report. Thank you, Chair Dickinson. Uh, yesterday, the Strategic and Operational Excellence Committee met. We had one information item and two discussion items. The information item was from the Office of Str Strategy, Planning and Analysis System Plan Progress Report by Vice President for Strategy, Planning and Analysis, Christine Hoyt. Chris reported that 15 out of the 18 strategies are on track and have been marked green, and three strategies have been marked yellow. The goal leads will work closely with Christine and myself to ensure that all the action items and the strategies are completed per the goals the team has set for themselves. As the chair of the committee, I committed to meeting with Christine monthly to ensure she and her team stay on track and complete the 18 strategies on time. The discussion items, the first one was with the emergency management, emergency preparedness at WSU. Police Chief Gary Jenkins, Director Sean Ringo, and Director Jason Sampson gave a report. In their report, they discussed the emergency management and emergency preparedness and they described it as such that environmental health and safety, emergency management, and fire safety support the WSU system, working closely with public safety, facility services, the Office of Research Awareness, or excuse me, Assurances, college, colleges and finance and administration information services, or IT. WSU System Emergency Management engages regularly with representatives from each campus, Research Extension Center, and County Extension. WSU Emergency Management partners with state and local agencies for mutual support via mutual agreements and coordinated <laughs> comprehensive emergency management plans. The team also provided the regents with an overview of interagency agreements comprehensive emergency management plan, threat assessment team, emergency operations plan, emergency management response by emergencies such as inclement weather, power, utility outages, and WSU home, WS, excuse me, WSU home football games. The team also discussed how the emergency operations center works, coordination with the nuclear science center, how the alert system works, and also provided an overview of regular drills and system tests, active shooter training, ad hoc training, online training, and continuity and emergency response training. All in all, the regents received a very thorough and fulsome report on WSU emergency management. It was quite impressive. Uh, the second uh, discussion item was from uh, was a legislative review and agenda update given by Vice President and Chief Legislative Officer of External Affairs and Government Relations, Colleen Kerr. And Colleen had a number of her uh, team members with her as well. The Regents received a legislative update on state relations as well as programmatic and political overview federal regulations and, and also a political overview. The team walked the regents through the governor's budget process and timelines, provided an overview of WSU priorities versus state priorities. The team explained how the regents can help through Regents Day, stakeholder support and public affairs. And there was an, also an overview of federal regulations focused on advocacy, defense and engagement. And this was also a very fulsome and thorough report, and we really appreciate all the work that the Strategic and Operational Excellence Committee has done since we met last in September. And that ends my report. Thank you, Chair Dickinson. Thank you, Regent Shetler, for um, a great 
committee report and a great day yesterday with those presentations. They were very informative um, for the board. Um, I think just as a side note on the um, work that um, the committee does um, with the advocacy work and what Colleen and um, Chris Mulek were speaking about and then listening to our faculty Senate chair around morale and you know the work that our faculty does every day. It, it does emphasize the importance of some of the lobbying and um, work that Kirk and Colleen and um, Chris are really doing with the state around compensation and um, merit and appropriate adjustments. So I think that that rings true for me and I, I'm, I know it does for all of our regents. So that can't go without saying that uh, President Schultz, if there is anything you need from the regents to continue to help on that front, we will um, do or do whatever is asked of us on that space. So, okay. Um, next, we have a academic and student affairs committee report from Regent Cerna. Thank you, uh, Chair Dickinson. I'll keep this fairly short because it is short. Uh, two items that we. Uh, uh, took on yesterday as uh, one that I think is going to be an action item now uh, in, that we'll act on today and another uh, that we're looking at as a future action item. Uh, the first is nursing, and we heard from Provost and Executive Vice President Chancellor WSU Pullman Campus Elizabeth Chilton about the proposed redesignation of the Doctor of Nursing practice degree from a graduate to a professional degree. degree. Um, this uh, request for the redesignation follows uh, multiple stakeholder conversations over the past year and the unanimous support for this change across uh, administrative leadership and program uh, faculty. And I believe we're gonna make uh, take action on that later today. Uh, we also heard from uh, Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs, Ellen Taylor, uh, regarding a housing issue and a proposal a revision to WAC 504-24030 regarding undergraduate housing requirement on the WSU Pullman campus. And this would uh, update and clarify rules around the first year living requirement, and it would remove the option for first year students to live in off campus university approved housing. Uh, this is an item that has been uh, discussed uh, for a while now. It also would improve the university's ability to respond to emergent student needs and special circumstances. And it would also help these students, these first year students, to have full support and mentorship of resident hall professionals, staff, access to services to meet fundamental needs and mental health resources. And that is a future action item. And that's my report. Thank you, Regent Cerna. Um, again, really great content yesterday and um, appreciated the update on housing. So thank you. Okay, next we have our finance administrative administration committee report that Regent Shower will be taking us through. And then Regent Shower, just for a point of process, I will read the motions when we get to that portion. All right, sounds good. We had uh, an excellent meeting with three information items and two action items. Uh, the first information item was our athletic budget update, which was presented by um, both our athletics business office, which was um, in collaboration with our university department of finance uh, and administration. We had the presentation uh, which was an introduction by our new senior associate athletic director and CFO, Brent Meyer. This was a, his first uh, Board of Regents meeting. And uh, we also had Deputy Director of Athletics, Anne McCoy. Um, they were sharing some good news with us in terms of the ability for our athletics <clears throat> department to meet their budget forecast for this past year and uh, also shared with us how they're forecasting for this next year. We had a really good discussion as it relates to our PAC-12 funding and a dialogue around the implications of our media contracts and, and there's still a lot yet to be determined, particularly as it relates to as we come back and support our athletics in person. Um, but we are hopeful that we will continue in the same spirit that we have been 
which is diligence around um, ensuring our multi-year commitment to managing our athletics budget and our commitment to um, ensuring that we're meeting our budget. So with that, we moved into our academic year 2023-2024 tuition rates um, discussion. This was the first of what will be uh, three uh, reviews of our tuition rates. We had Associate Vice President for Finance, Matt Skinner, and Executive Director Kelly Westoff present to us. There's a few things that I want to um, actually pull out of that presentation. Um, the first is just some really important statistics that I think are um, significant for us to mention here, which are outcomes of affordability and the efforts that are being done. Um, a couple that I felt were pretty stunning and needed to be mentioned in this space, the percentage of resident undergrads who pay no tuition has improved from 31% in 2014 to 37% in 2022. And the percentage of resident undergrads who pay full tuition has fallen from 42% in 2014 to 33% in 2022. And the percentage of resident undergrads who graduated with no loan debt was 39.6% in 2014, but has since climbed to 50% in 2022. And I think um, President Schultz mentioned some of the national efforts around reducing student debt, which is certainly a priority at Washington State University. And so I think this is an area where um, as we start to talk about setting tuition rates, um, we are really trying to pay close attention to affordability of um, higher education. And I think it's also important to note, I recall um, when I joined uh, the board, it, it, was, it was difficult to wrap my um, arms around tuition increases year over year, year after year <clears throat> and how the board participated in that conversation. And I so appreciate our opportunity to look at this over a three meeting period so that we have the opportunity to have a robust dialogue, to ask questions, to engage with um, our leadership team so that we really understand um, what this tuition increase, um, what the impact on our student experience is, what the needs are by our faculty and our university, and certainly um, how we can help to impact um, ensuring that uh, we have a full picture. So. I just wanted to, you know, reiterate that there's a future action item in uh, March that we'll look at and then the actual action item in May. Um, we also had a, um, an information item that was presented by, by Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Ellen Taylor, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Linda McDermott, Resident Life and Housing Director, Meg Autry which was on the WSU Pullman revision of housing pricing structure. Um, what I appreciated about this presentation was um, how this housing structure was in essence really trying to reflect much more of an equitable approach that based on our housing that the um, pricing would reflect um, what housing experience you would uh, be paying for. So it also was an opportunity for us to really um, see there's a sense of urgency for us to ensure that we are moving forward with perhaps some needed improvements in our housing and dining. Um, the two action items that uh, Chair Dickinson, I'll ask that you move forward with uh, the first is WSU Pullman Champion Center design phase approval, and the second is the WSU Spokane Medicine Building Renovation Project budget increase. We had a good dialogue about both. Um, in particular, I just want to mention, I continue to be impressed with the teams involved in looking at ways for us to uh, to to build and design uh, what we need on our campuses through both legislative support as well as private philanthropy. And so this just continues to be a way for us to, um, to meet the needs of our WSU community um, by looking at our greater WSU community um, for help and support. And lastly, I just wanna mention as we welcome our new Executive Vice President for Finance and Administration, um, I am appreciative of uh, Associate Vice President for Finance, Matt Skinner, who has helped me in um, this process and has been 
incredibly instrumental in um, this transition uh, and uh, just really appreciate all of his efforts. So with that, I will turn the meeting over to you, Chair Dickinson, for our uh, action items today. Thank you, Regent Shower. Appreciate um, that work. We, those who've served as the committee chair of the Finance and Administration <laughs> Committee know that's a big committee with lots of stuff. So um, thanks for your commitment and the time that you give to it outside of these Regent meetings. It's, um, it's noted, so thank you. Our first motion um, is for the WSU Pullman Champion Center of the design phase approval. I move that the Board of Regents authorize the WSU Pullman Champion Center project to proceed to the design phase using the design build process pursuant to RCW 3910 and further delegate authority to the president or designee to enter into any and all contracts necessary to complete the design phase with the total cost not to exceed $2 million as proposed. There is a motion on the floor and I'm looking for a second. I second. Thank you, Regent Shower. Any board discussion or questions um, regarding the Champion Center at this time? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Thank you, motion carries. Next, um, I will be bringing the motion for the medicine building renovation, the project budget increase. Before bringing the motion, I note for the record that it was decided that this item will be presented as an action item rather than a future action item in accordance with the Board of Regents bylaw 1112B. I move that the Board of Regents approve an increase of $1 million in the project budget for WSU Spokane Medicine building, re building Renovation and further delegate authority to the president or designee to enter into any and all contracts necessary to complete the project within the new budget amount of 16 million as proposed. There is a motion on the floor and I'm looking for a second. Second. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, any board discussion regarding the medicine building renovation? Okay, um, at this time, I would all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. Thank you, motion passes. Okay, um, we have, so yep, we've already gotten to meet our new um, vice president for finance, uh, executive vice president for finance. So we will move from other business into public comment. We do have two people signed up for public comment at this time. Um, Again, I will remind you, we will be open and keep public comment open for 10 minutes um, for people to provide comments to the board. Please note there is a two minute limit per speaker. So with that, we have a Christopher Neal who has signed up. Um, he is a staff member at Washington State University and his topic that he wishes to speak is um, just a, a complaint. So I'll open the floor up to Christopher Neal. Okay, just give us one moment and see if there's anybody outside. Okay. All right, it does not appear that Mr. Neal um, is joining us today, so we will move next to our second individual who is um, a student at Washington State University. His name is Gil Rezin, and Gil is here to speak on the topic of divestment, divestment of fossil fuel, and Gil, I will hand the floor to you. Cool, thank you. Um, just making sure, can everyone hear me all right? 
All right, cool. Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm Gil Rezin. Uh, I am a first year student in computer science at Wazoo uh, and a member of the Fossil Free Wazoo student group. Uh, I would like to thank President Schultz for taking the time to meet with a member of our group, Mason Burns, on November 10th and for the developments on the sustainability task force. We are very pleased by the appointment of Jason Sampson, faculty advisor for our current student organization, Wazoo's Environmental Sustainability Alliance, as co-chair of the task force, and also that a member of the Sustainability Alliance will be participating. We look forward to our involvement on the task force as it develops core principles for environmental, social, and governance investing at Wazoo. Our hope is that these core principles will allow for full divestment of the endowment holdings from the world's largest 200 extractors of fossil fuels and for the investment in renewable energy. We believe divestment is an especially effective way to fight climate change because it strikes at a root cause of the problem, the funding of fossil fuel companies. While it's important to ensure financial returns on investments, there exists a greater reason for divesting. Fossil fuels are known to contribute to climate change and are as such no longer a secure investment area. Such investments are at risk of becoming devalued or stranded assets. The fossil fuel industry may be further crippled by the current scandal over Exxon's alleged misinformation campaign of, uh, about global warming. And we are all highly familiar with what occurs if the world continues to invest in fossil fuels. From increased weather, extreme weather events to wildfires, we will continue to experience harm to our community in Pullman and across our state. So we urge you, President Schultz, as well as the Board of Regents and Wazoo Foundation Investment Committee to continue to support and work toward divestment because climate change and its effects are noticeable. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Gil. We appreciate you joining the meeting today and speaking to us. Um, okay. Well, uh, thank you again. I just um, would like to give a shout out to the people in this room who have put the meeting on uh, and all of our IT support. Well done. We appreciate it. And um, before we adjourn, I just would again ask that everybody on the call here keep um, our friends at the University of Idaho and the family members that are impacted by this, as well as our own community here in Pullman and at WSU, um, keep them in your thoughts. Um, as they continue to move through this um, really difficult situation. So with that, um, I think the next time we will be gathering will be over in Everett. No, when's our next gathering point? Uh, March. March. Yeah. Tri-Cities. Uh, Tri-Cities. Tri We're in the Tri-Cities. I was trying to jump ahead. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day and a great weekend. Appreciate all of you participating over the last two days.